Welcome back to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth. Last time, we explored a little bit more of the 8th floor of the Clock Tower, and finally got started on the 9th floor. Oh boy, this place is, uh, this place is kind of insane. I've actually got a few options for where I can go next. I can either, uh, raise that pillar there. Yeah, I have a door right there that I haven't been through yet. And here I have some other areas I can access via the gondolas, so, uh, yeah. A few options, but before that, I'm gonna actually head to the Velvet Room, and finally, I can actually upgrade my Navigator Persona. So, I have a fusion combination that can make Luxme via Sraosha, so let's go. And I can pass down four skills. Unfortunately, I don't have four Navigator skills to pass down. So, my last one's gonna be just, I don't know, just a, a filler slot. I guess in pure reach. This will use Barong, but like I said before... Oh. Huh! This could be good, this could be bad. This means I lose Renewal Aura and don't get Purify Odin? Oh, it seems to have gone differently than planned. I wanted Odin, but not like this. Let me just quickly check. Level 72, okay then. Yeah, I don't have any healing navigator skills. That is really, really unfortunate. <sighs> I think I have to buy... How much money do I have? Can I even afford to buy back all three of those personas? Huh, I can actually now fuse you with Odin. Uh, problem with this is that I can't actually pass down Healing Hand either, which makes Renewal Aura worse, but I do get Purifying Rain. Okay, these three again, and for the other skill I have uh, the Sleep Circle in Pure Reach. I guess I'll just try and make the same one again. If I get another accident... Okay, good. That would have been ridiculous. But we have Lux Me or Lunch Meat now, and I think that's all I'll be doing there. Okay, so we might as well take care of these two stroll conversations. The clock tower's too much, you're telling me. Don't worry, it is almost over. <sighs> yeah, this place is going okay. on forever, but it is the final dungeon, so that does make sense. Yeah, these floors are pretty enormous. Ha <laughs> Ah, uh, there's a ton of things we could answer here, but I suppose all the obstacles? <sighs> well, so the map does show them. <sighs> yeah, it is a little sad that this is all coming to an end. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah, well, uh... We obviously want that to happen because then Teddy will get rejected by her one more time. Alrighty then, leave it. Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry for cutting off Jim Face line there. Are you gonna say the? Yep, I knew it. The line. Uh, someone should be keeping count of how many lines that, how many times that's shown up. Still growing. Is this uh, an ultimate persona related one? Hello. Oh no, it's just a general plot event. I guess, kind of. Is something the matter? Not quite. Oh, I think I know what what uh, event this one is. <sighs> hmm. I'm just trying to resist my heart exploding right now.
not quite. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so tempted just to say this. I see. <sighs> yeah, he has. Also, Naoto kind of relates here because she's used to being treated like a kid too. be in middle school by then and have tons of fangirls if um yeah that's for Persona 4 Rin Ultimax you'll see seriously can Kanji and Naoto just adopt Ken somehow please that that just needs to happen okay time to sort out my party and heading on to the labyrinth okay so here's the equipment setup that I've gone with I have four characters who still haven't upgraded their personas, and that means that poor Koromaru will be the last one left. So that's kind of sad, but it's just the way that it lines up with the number of party members that we have. And so you've still got Halel, Akihiko has you because he's fast, Aikis has the one with Shura Tensei and Myriad Arrows, Yosuke has the Circles, Ken has one with high SP, uh, as well as Die For Me, and Fuga has the new Navigator persona. So let's save and head out. I actually had to study a couple of maps I prepared earlier in order to just plan out where to go in this part, because there's a few different directions we could be going. But one thing that I do need to make sure that we do is to press this switch right here. So this is kind of what we were working towards in the last part, but uh, raising this piston means we'll actually finally be able to progress past... Uh, where are you? Yeah. This door here. I'm glad we didn't go through that before, we wouldn't have actually been able to progress, we would have been blocked by a piston without pressing this button. So, with that button pressed... Is this area full of enemies like that? One more battle should get us one more upgrade. I have found a switch. The stronger the enemy, the more experience we gain. And there we go. I wish I'd get taller as I leveled up too. Well, your persona certainly is actually not about to get taller, but about to get wider. This is a new persona. Call him Nemi. Call him Nemi is the pre-Vedic spirit of the Zodiac. Uh, who's also mentioned in the Ramayama as a Rakshasa, as well as Ravana's uncle. So Kalanemi's ultimate skill is Target Boost, which raises damage dealt when striking weaknesses. This skill isn't bad in theory, it's just weird they put it on Ken of all people, because Ken doesn't have a particularly high magic stat to really pull off a, um, uh, like a full elemental combo, but... So it, yeah, it does seem like a bit of a weird skill. Also, if magic was better, that skill would probably be amazing. Like, if Target Boost was in a regular Persona game, it'd probably be fantastic. But as it stands, this is not a regular Persona game. This is Persona Q. And because of that, yeah, Target Boost is not all that great. Actually, in uh, Persona 5's highest difficulty, is kind of everyone has Target Boost, even the enemies. Which actually makes the hardest difficulty in P5, ironically, kind of easier than... Uh, it really should be, there? because it, uh, like, I think it, like, triples, hey, or even back. quadruples weakness and technical damage, but that it counts you as well as the enemies, so as long as you know the enemy's weaknesses, you can kill them very quickly on that mode. Anyway, this leads you into a little area that has, uh, a switch for a piston. And that will open up, uh, this staircase right here, letting you get back down to the previous floor without, um, uh, more easily, basically. And it looks like that's about where this room ends. At least we can fill out a few more tiles this way. 
And this will take us back to the starting point, so I think that should be everything in this... Yeah, from the map I prepared earlier, it doesn't look like we, we can access anything else from here, so our only destination is back on the 8th floor. Why do I get the feeling, though, that I'm going to have yeah, these pillars there? in the wrong configuration and I'll be forced to come back here anyway? Because we are going to be passing through the room where these pillars um, extend to on the 8th floor. Okay, we might be able to complete Elizabeth's Let request here. Cautious. That enemy's weakness is ice. Um, what should I do next? Hello! Oh crap, I... Good. I accidentally pressed escape with Ken, I'm so glad that failed. Because if, uh, it succeeded, then I wouldn't have got any experience from the hands. That would have been incredibly stupid. Okay, we should be getting that item Elizabeth needed. And with that, we actually get two Persona upgrades. I'm not done yet. There's no upper limit. Caesar. This is the evolution of my power. Some people have noticed that a lot of characters' stats actually go down upon getting their ultimate Personas. This seems to be a common feature of all of them, but I think their level 99 stats are higher than their unrevolved counterparts, but I'm not sure. Anyway. Akiko's persona becomes Caesar. This is a common title for Roman emperors, and this makes his ultimate persona one of the few, along with Artemisia, to be based off of real historical figures. It's most likely based on Julius Caesar. And so his ultimate skill is Conqueror title, greatly raised critical hit rate. This is just a pretty good practical skill all round. It's essentially always active, if you're using physical attacks, and you kind of should be with Akihiko, and it's, yeah, it, it's just generally pretty great. Combos well with abilities that increase critical hit damage. I leveled up! So no more of this total disappointment crap, okay? Um... About that, Yosuke. This is my new potential. Susano. So, firstly, his ultimate persona is Suzanoo, who, if you know anything about Japanese mythology, you probably know this guy. Heck, if you know anything about Persona, you probably know this guy, because he's been the ultimate persona of three different characters in the series. Uh, I believe Masao Inaba, aka Mark, who dances crazy in Persona 1, uh, and Yusuke in Persona 5. Uh, all with different titles, but still, it's the same Suzanoo. He's the brother of Amaterasu, a and he's the Japanese god of storms, born when Izanagi washed his nose after he was tainted with filth from the underworld. I'm not making that up. So, Suzanoo's ultimate skill... Oh, we get Kamikaze Strike as well. Uh, his ultimate skill is Death Needle. Remember how I said Mitsuru's is probably the worst ultimate skill in the game? I kind of feel like this is the second worst. Low chance of instant kill, higher with ailment, one enemy. If you want instant death, you might as well just use Hamor and Mudor because they're fantastic in this game, and why would you want to be using physical attacks on Yosuke, and it's just... Oh, this skill's pretty bad. So, unfortunately, yes, more of this total disappointment crap. I hope I did get the item... Yeah, I did, good. Right, so I, I can report that now. Uh, it's a shame because Susano is pretty cool in his Persona there 4 design. Switch ahead. Shall we press it? Or should I destroy it? He's not quite as ridiculous as his like super version uh, from Golden where he has an afro made out of the sun. Oh. I'm detecting signals from an FOE. I can't Please go that way, can I? I think I see what I'm supposed to do here. Oh, actually, you can hold B to speed up the gondolas. I forgot you could do that. So we might actually need to use these stairs back down to the bottom floor just to get around that spider. Unless we want to kill it, but... I mean, it's totally possible with Debilitate, but... No, I'd probably rather just go down the stairs from here. Okay, so if you run onto the gondola, it actually speeds that up. Good to know. Don't think I actually knew that from all my times playing this game. Aw, that ended 
too soon. And we have our final upgrade. I have become stronger once more. My persona has transformed. It is now Athena. We have Athena. So, very metaphorical of Aikas' character development, she goes from a statue of Athena to the actual Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom. And she gets Aegis Shield. So, this is basically just a better version of Runic Shield. High chance of nullifying Fire, Wind, Ice, and Elect versus the user's row. I think it does stack with Runic Shield too. It's not the best ultimate skill, but it definitely helps in Aegis' tanking ability. From what I've heard, Aegis got even better in Q2, which is kind of amazing considering how good she is in this one. Okay, ride this all the way down. Do a loop, use it as a bridge. And then we can go down the stairs. I should have the pillar in the right position to proceed. Yeah, these last floors, they really test your puzzle solving skills. All that work on the ninth floor just to make one area of the eighth oh, floor hey, accessible. That, that one door we haven't been through yet. We need two pillars in the right configuration just to get through there. And I really don't hope it's three. But finally, new territory. And it's a chest that's taunting us. I'm doing it. Call an enemy. I'm doing it. Call an enemy. Persona. We won. That one was really strong. It made me nervous. Uh, no, because you just systematically instant death killed all three of them in a row. Okay, heading through here first. As I thought, there's nothing much in this area. Non-shooting... <laughs> I love the naming of some of these items. Non-shooting fork is pretty great. But, yeah, we'll be able to unlock a few things at Theodore's with the non-shooting fork, I believe. In Actually, I think that's what unlocks Iger's next armor. So that's good. And yeah, that pillar right there, we needed to have that pillar, um, in the, uh, in the raised position. No, we need to have that pillar lowered. I guess now might be as good a time as any to mention that when I uh, first played Orkami, I pronounced his name as Suzano. I didn't get that it was supposed to be an extra O sound. Though granted, I think that is how they spell it in that game. And here's Athena. It's actually fitting that Athena's ultimate skill is a shield-based one, because the shield that she's holding are on her actual uh, Persona artwork in this game. Ken is getting a lot of follow-up attacks, I don't know why. But the shield that she's holding on her artwork is actually based off of the shield... Uh... Actually, no, I think it's based on the shield that um, is made from Medusa's head. Oh, actually, that shield is called the Aegis. So, yeah, like, her ultimate skill is basically that shield from mythology, which <laughs> is pretty I cool. <laughs> My persona's getting better than okay, that's kind of nice to have. Being the ultimate lover's arcana persona, Ishtar learns a lot of good healing. It is a treasure box. Do you wish that we open it? Overflow. Shall I destroy it? No, don't destroy it. Overflow Bangle, I've heard that name before, I think. Oh, because we just recently got access to being able to purchase that at Theodore's shop. It's basically just a watered-down version of the Almighty Badge and the All-Round Badge and those kind of items. But it's, it's decent for what it is. 
I'm kind of glad they at least give you a chance as a consolation prize in case you make your way all the way down here and uh, don't have this pillar lowered. Because that would be really, really frustrating to have to deal with, so... There's something strange about that wall. Like I said, Check glad there's at least a chest there. Oh, a treasure box. Speaking of chest, let me guess, that makes you immune to stone, or at least resistant to stone? Yeah, prevent petrification. Well, we have an item that prevents all status ailments, so we don't really have much use for that anymore. But it'd be useful if you hadn't completed that quest yet. That was easy. Okay, new level on the protagonist, which means new personas to fuse in the Velvet Room. Um, are you okay carrying that much? Organization is important too. Yeah, speaking of which, we might um, need to head back and sell stuff soon. Well, at least we've op opened up some shortcuts. This shortcut in front of the stairs to the um, ninth floor is particularly useful because it lets us uh, have easier access to the pillar switches. The is For example, on yeah, this room right Please, here, heavily phone. dependent on pillars. So if you don't have the right combination of these pillars down, bad things may or may not happen. Such bad things uh, include, but are not limited to, the Reaper killing you, the Reaper killing you, the Reaper killing you, and the Reaper killing you. Uh, such as now, uh, yeah. Hmm. Would it just be straight up... You know what, I think it's actually straight up easier to use a Goho M, and then start from floor 9 and head down those stairs next time. It's one benefit of having these two floors being so interlinked, is that you can quite easily access one floor from another. Okay, let's not sell everything. I'm so glad the game reminds you about that. I guess we can turn in the request while we're here. And the Chakra Ring, I believe, is just the reverse of the Rudra Ring. Hmm. Well done. <laughs> this Elizabeth will be is great. I knew it couldn't have been that simple. And at least we get a small amount of experience. You know, it'd be funny if this was enough to level up Koromaru. It was not. Speaking of which, though, I might as well swap Ken out of the party for Koromaru, even though he's been doing very well for me at this point. Because I might as well get the final Persona upgrade out of the way. Because he's still the only one who hasn't upgraded yet. Yeah, Chaka Ring, SP costs are halved. Otherwise known as, this game becomes closer to a regular Persona game. I don't know why they set SP costs so high in this one. It was to compensate for boost, but they went way too far. But, that plus die for me sounds like an interesting combination. Let's try that out. So yeah, as you'll be seeing here, I'm starting from the ninth floor, only to immediately go down the stairs and go to the 8th floor. Because we have a shortcut right here that takes us to where we need to go next. So I'm not entirely sure whether this is the right combination of pillars. Please stay on your guard. Okay, rest. One, two, one, two, rest. One, two, and then one, two, rest, one, two, rest, one, two. That pillar being up is probably a bad thing. One, oh, there's more stuff here. And that gets me trapped, I thought it would. But at least it's floor completion. Okay, so I know what our goal is here. It's to get down this tiny area here, and I think I might know how to do it. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna lure the Reaper up here and then just slip through. There are three shadows. Cool ring, but I'm only interested in boxing rings. <laughs> okay then. Die me for only 37 SP, and in fact, that's just enough for Alice to regenerate after battle, too. And a few things are panic, so I might be able to test out Death Needle. Hello. Actually, I have to complete this battle quickly because otherwise the Reaper will be on me. Rise up! 
two enemies left. Can't back down now. Next move. Okay, these all have to die this turn, otherwise the Reaper will be saying hi. Okay, so let's see. Death Needle. Let's try this. The dice in the front might just straight up die to Myriad Arrows. I'm kind of hoping that it does. It did not, okay. I believe that was instant death. Speaking of instant death, though, you need to thank you. Okay, Koromaru still has a way to go. But, uh, yeah, I guess that was the instant death effect of Death Needle. Are you okay carrying that much? Organization is important, too. Oh, I knew I forgot something. I forgot to sell my stuff. Oh, well. Okay, we have a shortcut there, which I had a feeling was one way. Oh, hi there, Reaper. Ah, that's sneaky. Yeah, I can't actually get through. I think I might know how to do this now. I think we need two of the upper pillars to be uh, in the raised position. Too fast. Boring. I wonder about this setup. No, that just makes it even bloody worse. Wow, I hate this puzzle. enough time here. Okay, good, we did. Right. I, I think I had the right combination of pillars the first time. Oh, that is an annoying puzzle. Anyway, we can move on now, and with that, we can activate a shortcut so we never have to go through that whole weaker situation able to ever break again. The wall ahead. Open fire. And we have stairs leading up to the next floor. So we're still um, only just over halfway done with this floor. Two shadows, they're strong. Oh, so close. <laughs> and I don't need that. quite a few areas we can access from here though. A power spot is up ahead of us. This just leads to a power spot although we're already full up. And that area in the corner there is very interesting. There are three shadows. Orders leader, I'm counting on you. Okay, this should be an easy die for me win for Koromaru here and that will get him his upgraded persona. I don't even need to look up any mythological info on this one because it's just an upgraded version of Cerberus. A lot of people were wondering if, um, like, Koromaro got an upgraded persona, whether it would be Hades. I think Hades was a persona in one of the earlier games. Yes, we now have what I like to call Super Cerberus. And Koromaro's ultimate skill is Deadly Vanguard, so it's basically a slightly better version of Bloody Vanguard. So that FOE will LED. just stay right there and not really do much. There's no real risk of getting attacked by it unless you run into these webs down at the bottom. What's up? Mm -hmm. This area yeah. is actually relevant to a side quest. Let's go. 
Zin just noticed something. So yeah, that pill is also important for the side quest. And guess what? More web rooms. I'm gonna go and mark all these webs and... Then I think I'll actually be saving this until the next part, because then we'll be able to move up to the ninth floor again. Slowly but surely we're making progress. Even though that progress seems slow because this place is just absolutely massive, but these two floors are the real final dungeon of this game. That's how I like to see it. So that's all the webs in this room mapped out. Like before, we will have to lure this spider away because we need to move through either of these two webs up here to progress. You know, there is a shortcut right after we do that, so I may as well take care of this one now. So, we need to find a place where we can get that spider to jump three times and it won't be able to reach us. And I think here's a good place to start. No, it's not! An FOE! Escape immediately! I have found that personally, Koromaru is a really good user of Vanish Balls because he's immune to Mamuron and really fast. And that will reset the spider's position, so yeah. Actually, I think this one's better. Okay, there we go, we can do that. From here though, we can't step on this, that is three jumps away from the spider, as is that other one, so we need to lure it uh, once again. And let's see how we can do that. In fact, I think there's only one web here that is not three jumps away from the spider, and is not the spider's original starting position, and that's this one. Okay, so now that we've stepped there, Yeah, the one over here is still three jumps away. I don't think this one is, though. Yeah, just barely. Doesn't really matter which of these two webs you use to get past, as long as you use one of them. And we're through! Huh. This wall seems... And we have yet more stairs. So we've got options for where to go next. We certainly have options. In fact, if I'm remembering right, these stairs will take us, yep, really close to a shortcut. So I might as well take care of that too. And we've got another gondola room. But if we look closely, yep, there's the final save point. The end is in sight. So let's activate this. So just like you said, the stairs are in sight, but we're nowhere near close to getting to them yet. I'd estimate we're about halfway through these two floors at this point, and this is where the game really taunts you because if we didn't trigger this gondola by stepping on it like that, we could just walk straight to the end, but unfortunately that is not to be. We would have to walk past that gondola from below in order to get to the very end, but there it is, our goal is in sight. So on that note, let's head back and prepare for the final stretch of the clock tower. Though I think there'll be at least two more parts. See you next time.